Are you ready to hoist the colors? Now, time for the most in-depth look at the world of ECU athletics. Welcome in to Hoist the Colors with your host, Stephen Igo on 94.3 The Game. Watch the show live on Facebook and at 94.3thegame.com. Now, here's your host, Stephen Igo. All right, welcome in to Hoist the Colors on this Thursday, March 21st edition of the program. Big day in college athletics. It is the first day. I I, I treat it as the first real day of the NCAA tournament. I know they got the first four, but uh, this is the first real day to me. We'll have a game tipping off shortly. Michigan State, Mississippi State, we got that on in the studio. Uh, Instead of looking at ourselves, we'll watch some college basketball today. And we're joined by a very special guest. He is East Carolina Director of Athletics, John Gilbert. John, you're a frequent member uh, of the guest list here on Hoist the Colors, so thanks for being back. Yeah, thanks for having me. I'm I'm uh, impressed. You still said I'm a special guest. Uh, and <laughs> Absolutely, I, I hold that in high regard. So well, thanks for having me. We enjoy having you on. I mean, we've had shows in the past where you've just read questions straight from the the hoist the colors fans or the members and and address the head on. You, you know, you never dodge any questions. You're very upfront, and I appreciate that as a media member, and I, I think the fans do as well. So we'll have some questions from fans. Uh, again, we're live on YouTube, Facebook. If you guys got any questions there, drop them. We'll get to them over this next hour. And uh, t- tune us in as you watch some NCAA basketball on this Thursday. All right, John, so we'll talk about and lead with ECU basketball and specifically the men's program, Mike Schwartz, second year. Definitely some some ups and downs. And I I think going into the season, at least covering it, it felt like there was the most energy, hopeful feeling I've seen from the fan base in a while. Picked to finish fifth in the preseason. You know, I think 15 and 18, the final record. What would you kind of make of, of the season? You know, what kind of went wrong, in your opinion? What went well from, from your vantage point? Well, I, I'm really um, – I, I think Mike Schwartz is a really good coach. Uh, we continue to build the program. You know, the, the landscape really continues to change with, you know, NIL, the transfer portal, evaluating players. Um, I am like Coach Schwartz and our student-athletes. I wanted more wins this year. And there was an expectation of more wins. Uh, I think that, you know, we, we've got to, you know, go get some additional pieces uh, in the program. I, I want to win in basketball. And I fully think that we can win at basketball at ECU. Like, I, I 100% believe that. What we have invested more and are spending more on ECU basketball than ever before. And we're going to continue to do that. And um, it, like, it just aches me from the inside when, when uh, you know, we don't win or, or don't have success and I want it so badly. You, you know, we, we've got to do a couple of things. Um, we've got to continue to invest in basketball. You saw what we've spent in Menjis, and really we've spent a lot in Menjis since I've been here. It it did not look like it looks now. I can remember my first time in Menjis walking in it, and there were no logos. It was like, bare as bones. Like you really didn't know what arena you were in. And so we've spent a lot of money on it. Uh, we're going to continue to invest in our basketball program. Uh, our donors have been unbelievable we've got to have competitive success and and so uh coach schwartz wants that uh success that type of success our student athletes like i've talked to a lot of our players after the season and they want it uh we just got to continue to to do things to chip away at that and and i think the difficult thing is what 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 is what is hard and, and we've got to get over this hump at some point is we just don't have the history or tradition, but we've got to do when we get a student athlete on our campus. And I'd say this about all our sports, but but basketball, you know, we've got a great practice facility. We we've got a really good infrastructure. Uh, I think if we can get them on campus, we can get them here. It's just sometimes you got to overcome that history to to get them to actually visit. You obviously made the decision after a couple of years ago to bring in Coach Schwartz to make a coaching change. I remember talking to you then. 
you felt ECU can definitely win in basketball, and I know you just reiterated that. So, uh, you know, I always I get frustrated when fans say ECU needs to shut down the program and spend all the money on football and baseball uh, just because of the lack of, of history. And I get it. There's been a lot of frustration over the years. I don't, you know, it's not Coach Schwartz's fault that they didn't win for 50 years before he got here or whatnot. But, you know, that frustration builds for the fans over time. So what would you say to the fans who are always, you know, fed up with basketball this time of year after another losing season and they tried to get behind it and they're like, oh, it's the same old ECU basketball. Why, why will it change going forward? Well, number one, I don't think it is the same old ECU basketball. Um, again, if you look at the infrastructure upgrades um, that that we've made, you know, locker room, Menji's, uh, court, uh, the seating, the lights, the um, graphics, you, you know, uh, our NIL continues to be competitive on, on the basketball front. Uh, I look around and see other programs that, you know, don't have basketball tradition that that have some success, and it, I think it's a growing opportunity. You know, for me, um, you know, we we've just got to go out and identify the right talent that's a good fit here uh, to to get this program turned around, and and I believe we can do it. I, I think from a financial standpoint. Um, you, you know, basketball, when you look at having a basketball program, uh, not, not only the revenue that you're generating, you also get a lot of conference revenue as tied to basketball that, that you get to help uh, your program. So uh, a robust basketball program is important. We are going to continue to work very hard to get it where we all want it. And it, it eats me up inside way more than it does our fans uh, because I'm living it every day and trying to work on it to, to help get it fixed. And we're going to continue to invest on it to do what we can to, to make it right. From when you first got here to now, how much is, has that investment grown in terms of like staff, paying staff you know, for travel, chartering the games? How much have you guys improved that aspect of things? Well, it, I don't know if you can put a number on well, it. Well, I, I mean, it, it's millions when you look at what what we've invested, you, you know, definitely a couple million dollars easily right. just off the top of my head. And it's actually probably more than that when you look at, you know, charter flights and, you, you know, all these things. We've got a donor payer paying for uh, a trip, uh, you know, a, a international trip this summer that I think will, will help, um, you know, people look at our program as a, a meaningful program. We have to do things like that. So, so I definitely would say millions of dollars. Um, and we're going to continue like it, we're, we're going to figure it out. And I feel like, and I know the attendance late in the year wasn't great, but even still, you look at the American as a whole, obviously Memphis, Wichita State, they're always going to have fans. But East Carolina was right there hovering around the top five in attendance in the league. So, like, I guess that's what probably makes it so frustrating is if ECU ever won a basketball, it could be a pretty special product. We've just never seen that, I don't know, consistent success. Is that yeah, kind of how you I, see it? Yeah, I, I, you know, I've had coaches that I know that are in our league that come in for the game and they go, Man, we we really don't have this at our place. Like, not that many people come to our games. So, what we have is special, and and I know people, um, I know people care. I almost like equate our basketball team to like the the history of the Cubs. You, you know, they went, they felt like they had this curse, and maybe we need to exercise some I think demons. That's the next step, uh, yeah, uh, bringing an exercise. And look, I'm willing. Yeah. Like like. Uh, uh, you know, if we need to do that, we're going to do it. And but but like you look at the Cubs, they they got over that hump, and it was like, hey, we can do this, right? And I believe in our core guys. I believe in our coaches. You know, like when when you look at the intangibles of our basketball, and I'd say both basketball programs, what we have good cultures. You know, we're bringing in really good student athletes from a character standpoint we just haven't had the competitive success on the men's side that we're looking for but but i know that coach schwartz and our staff 
they they are committed. I mean, what we are talking about it constantly, late at night and early in the morning, to try to do all the things we can to to turn the narrative. And I've I had conversations with Coach Schwartz on and off the record, and I feel like as much as it eats at us, it doesn't eat it doesn't compare to what it eats at him because he's living it, breathing it every day, and and he still is is extremely confident. You know. Sometimes a couple tough years can make it tough on a coach's belief, but he's like, no, we're still going to win here. He believes that. And and I feel like that will resonate when y'all go on the recruiting trail uh, too. So how much is that going to be a, a huge part of this offseason, John? Obviously, Brandon Johnson has announced he's going to hit the portal. R.J. Felton announced and he's coming back, which is huge news. And you mentioned earlier finding the right balance of, you know, what does ECU's approach need to be in this era – that is so difficult to kind of figure out. How much is that going into this offseason important? Well, I, I want to talk about NIL for a, yeah. a, a minute. And, you know, there are people on both sides of the fence. They love NIL because, you know, we can go attract whatever type of player we want to attract with whatever funds we have. And then there are other people that are on the other side that say, I, I really don't like it. I don't want to participate. But, but the reality is – you know, when you're talking to a potential student athlete and it is someone that is really good and you want to attract to your program, NIL is the first talking point. And I'm not saying that NIL is the end all be all. You have to have it to be competitive. The more funds that you have in NIL, the better player you can attract. But, but I think there's a balancing act because kind of like overall athletic department budget, ECU is never going to be at the top. We're never going to be at the top of NIL. It's not there. But we have to have enough to be competitive, and we have to rely on our coaches to evaluate the proper talent to bring in. And it's tough because, uh, you know, I know our coaches are having conversations you know, right now with players and, and, you know, some of the numbers are absurd and you just have to find that balance. But, but I'd also say, and, and I'm just using a figure, right. uh, this is not, uh, if, if we go into a game and we have, and I'm just picking random numbers, not specific to ECU, we have a hundred thousand in NIL for our team. And we're playing a team that has a million dollars of NIL for their team, it's a distinct advantage. I'm not saying that it is going to 100% determine the outcome, but definitely, I, I sound like Hunger Games. <laughs> the The odds are in their favor. Right. Uh, th- that's just the reality of, of where we are, and and so uh, the more that we can find the middle ground and the balance, the better off we're going to be. And I, I feel like obviously coaching plays a, a big role in terms of evaluating talent because I was reading a report the other day, the Big East had, I, I think the average was a million dollars per school in NIL money. You look at, you know, how many teams they got in the tournament, not, you know, the return on investment wasn't great. Like Georgetown spent a ton on a local kid and they won 10 games. So, I mean, it's like, you know, there has to be a balance. And, and I guess that's probably Coach Schwartz's toughest job maybe is to say, hey, we've got this probably NIL, you know, pot. How are we going to? How are we going to use it the best way possible? Well, well and there's a timing thing because yeah. the portal closes on May 1. And again, you talk to a potential student athlete and he goes, hey, uh, I'll come or I'll consider it, but I want $100,000. Right. You know, Everybody says that up front. Yeah, we all know? want 100000 yeah. And so you, you've got to wade through that. And, and you know, it, it's real. Uh, and... The, again, there are great disparities in NIL when you're playing other teams. We're not going to be at the top. We've got to find the balance between having enough to be competitive and um, identifying the right talent. TeamBoneyard.org, you can donate today to that cause. And, and from my understanding, at least there, there has been an uptick in basketball NIL presence here at ECU. You know, maybe not still to the level that it needs to be, but overall, from what you've heard, what do you feel like ECU stands as far as the league? Like, are they at least at a competitive spot in the American now? Well, it first of all, Team Boneyard's been unbelievable. Yeah. We we've got a core group of individuals that have been unbelievable that uh, continue to work with the community and businesses on attracting NIL opportunities, and we are. 
we are so much healthier in NIL than we were when we first started. And it really is, it, it is on the backs and shoulders of all those individuals that work for Team Boneyard to make it happen. I, I, I think when you look at NIL as it relates to football, uh, I would call us middle of the pack in football out of 14 teams. Uh, if you look at men's basketball, uh, I think we are probably, you know, m I wouldn't call us necessarily middle. Of, I I'd say middle of the pack to bottom third uh, fr from a, a funding standpoint. Gotcha. But, but continuing to get better. Like, I, I fully anticipate us to be about – middle of the pack i would say seven out of 14 schools you know as we move forward team boneyard continues to do a great job of you know generating interest there to help he is john gilbert ecu director of athletics let's get a break in we'll come back we i uh, want to ask you about women's basketball as well i thought what kim mcneil did this year with the injuries and the adversity was awesome uh, almost made it back to the ncaa tournament so we will uh, hit on that. Also, we got several conference realignments, the future of college football, and all that questions coming your way. Uh, this is Hoist the Colors on a Thursday. It's time to get more in 24 at Greenville Toyota. More savings, more selection, more for your trade. Get new Camrys, $269 a month, or new RAV4s, $299 a month. Save big and get more in 24 at Greenville Toyota. Acre Station Meat Farm, along with Lane Angus Beef, bring you Farm to Fork Beef. Stock your freezers now with affordable beef boxes, just in time for the grilling season. Farm to Fork Beef brings quality local beef to your family. From your traditional butcher shop, Acre Station Meat Farm. Come on down to Acre Station Meat Farm and find out why we're number one in fresh cuts and friendly service. Acre Station Meat Farm, Highway 32 North, Pine Town. Other restaurants claim their food is fresh and fast, but are they friendly? At Moore's, you're treated like family the minute you walk into their doors. With locations in Winterville, New Bern, Swansboro, Moorhead City, and Jacksonville, we've been practicing what we preach since 1945. At Moore's, our barbecue is slow-cooked and smoked over real wood daily until it's so tender it's falling off the bone. Combined with our fresh chicken, cooked-to-order seafood, and homemade fixins, we're sure you'll agree, if it's not Moore's, it's less. You know what the problem is with standard belts? Usually you have to choose between too tight or the opposite, too loose. But with Anson Belt and Buckle, you don't have to choose. We got rid of the holes and instead have a track system designed for micro adjustability. That way you can enjoy a perfect fit every time. Anson Belt and Buckle. Find your perfect fit today. enjoy it just as it is that was our inspiration behind bow coast west our newest community in beaufort north carolina embrace all that we love about this very special place and make it easy for families to enjoy all that this coastal lifestyle has to offer be inspired bow coast west Get more in 24 at Greenville Toyota. Get more savings on our huge Toyota selection. Shop new Corollas, just $239 a month, or new Tundras with 3.99% financing. Get more for your trade. Save big and get more in 24 at Greenville Toyota. Back to Hoist the Colors with Stephen Iko. Drink up the Aussie show hose. 194.3, the game. All right, welcome back in. Hoist the Colors on this Thursday. Michigan State, Mississippi State just tipping off from Charlotte. They are the first field of 64 game. So hopefully you got us tuned in on this Thursday as the NCAA tournament gets going. We got questions rolling in. Again, continue to drop them on Facebook, YouTube. We got some on Twitter as well. Um, Russ Carson, we'll hit this before I want to ask you about women's basketball because we were just talking about NIL. 
He says, any talk of awarding priority points to Power Club members who donate to NIL? So I know there's some sticky stuff there as far as NIL and Power yeah, Club. Yeah, ca can't do that right now today as it exists. Like, there can be no institutional involvement in NIL. Right. Now, obviously, we're monitoring how the landscape changes, and if that changes, certainly we could do that. But, yeah. but today, the way the rule stands, not permissible. I do want to get into, you know, the future of NIL and if at some point it'll be under the school umbrella. And I'm sure that'll be a robust discussion in itself. I do want to hit on the women's basketball. Kim McNeil uh, losing Sania Johnson. Uh, Amaya Joyner kind of in and out of the lineup throughout the year. Micah Dennis lost early in the year to injury. And I'm sure at some point a lot of fans wrote off, you know, them making a run in the tournament. They did just that. I think 19 wins they finished with again. One win shy. Uh, against Rice, but you got to be happy with the way that program, you know, I'm sure they wanted to go to the tournament, but to follow up that season they had last year, overcome adversity all year. Yes, yeah, certainly pleased. Uh, you know, I hated it for our student athletes and, and uh, Kim and her staff, you know, to lose, you know, some really good play pieces to the puzzle uh, in Sania and Micah. Um, but really pleased you know um for for us to make it back to the final you know given the injuries uh we had and again uh, just a testament to to kim and her staff for uh culture uh all all the things that that program does so well glad that they're having competitive success uh obviously our ultimate goal is to make the tournament uh but but i certainly feel really pleased with where that program is right now Obviously, men's basketball, football, the, the two big revenue sports, but it's, it feels like women's basketball the last few years has gotten pretty big, especially with the bigger schools, Caitlin Clark at Iowa and South Carolina. It was awesome that they were able to visit Minji's this year, but how have you seen that change from an AD perspective, women's basketball growing over the last few years? Well, well I, I think that it is being talked about more. Uh, there's more exposure for women's basketball on TV and the ESPN platforms. And then I think it helps when, you know, you have a Caitlin Clark who's a generational player that pulls all the people in on the fringe that is like, yeah, I'm okay with women's basketball, but I don't really watch it that much. And when uh, uh, Caitlin Clark is on national TV, th that fringe person tunes in. It, it creates a lot more exposure uh, that, that I think benefits everyone in inter intercollegiate athletics men's and women's sports john gilbert with us ecu director of athletics uh, of course uh, ecu baseball off to a 15 and 4 start cliff godwin continues to do his thing it's amazing we kind of take it for granted but his success and their program success such a it, it's it's not as easy as they make it seem i would say well i i think you know baseball is one of those weird sports where when everybody that goes into the uh, baseball stadium, they all think they can coach baseball. Oh, there's no doubt and, about that. And it, on the surface, the game looks very simple. Uh, and it, it's not a simple game. And, and I'm going to uh, – so I'm on the baseball committee this yeah, year. Right. And so I've gotten, you know, 400,000 emails from – the baseball group over the last uh, several months. And, and so um, I get all the umpire stuff. And so it was, um, t you know, you can take the baseball test that the, the umpires have <laughs> right. to take and they have to pass and it's timed and, and it's all these things. And so I'm like, I, I'm going to take the baseball test. Now I had no expectation because I had heard, yeah, it is not easy. Uh, I think I got like a 68 on it. And and it was, you know, everybody knows the simple the rules. rules yeah. But but it, it was very complex. And uh, I talked to one of the baseball umpires, and they're like, th there are a lot of umpires that fail that test, and it takes them a couple times to pass it because it's so complex. But my point is uh, Cliff makes it look simple. Um, it is not simple. Uh, he and his staff do a great job of recruiting. And, and uh, w when you have a program that has been successful at ECU baseball, and, and I'm going back to the beginning, if you look at the history of our baseball program, 
having repetitive, successful coaches ha- has done wonders for that program. And obviously Cliff has taken it uh, to another level and success breeds success. And, and, you know, we hear that a lot in sports. It's a cliche, but that's really what it, you know, the good programs right. stay the good programs when, when there's a really good foundation. Uh, but just pleased with where we are in that program. And man, I have a ton of confidence on Fridays and Saturdays when you savage and root uh, run out there. I, I feel pretty good on Fridays and Saturdays. Uh, we're fortunate to have, you know, those guys, and then the the supporting cast in the field. I could I could go position by position. We're just fortunate at ECU to have those guys. No doubt, ECU baseball will be on the road at UTSA this weekend to open league play. A um, couple questions here. Lane Smith says, "How much say do you have in ECU hosting a regional if they have a good enough season and they are borderline with RPI?" So you are. On the baseball <laughs> committee this year, take us through like what your role will be there, and then also, do you have to recuse yourself when ECU is being discussed? Well, well j- just um, you know, this is my first time through, but uh, starting in mid-April, every uh, Monday we have it's called a RAC R A C Regional Advisory Committee call. So I'll sit on two of those a week, and basically, you get on with coaches from that region and they list who they think the good teams are uh in that region and then once you get to um conference play uh i'll go to indianapolis uh and meet with the committee and and we'll go through uh you know the seating process and i will have to recuse myself when uh we talk about uh east carolina so i i won't be able to to, uh, You'll be able to put advocate on, on our behalf, although, uh, y- you know, our program speaks for itself. So I feel good about, you know, where we're headed. Is there any, and then maybe too early for this, but like the RPI was kind of criticized last year. Like, has there been any discussion among like ad- inventing a different tool at some point? Because obviously basketball has come up with the net and the RPI can be kind of hit or miss at times any discussion on that or is it too early no, well we, we actually have uh, working through that with a quad system okay. and and w- without going way down the rabbit hole the the quad system basically is is similar to rpi uh, but it, it will include um you know games on the road as well like uh, you net. know, it, it'll be kind of like a quad system. Like if you play a top 60 team, you know, on the road, that would be a quad one game. Right. So, you know, like for us, you, you go on the road, like we do midweek and you win a game against a top 60 opponent, that would be a quad one type win. So I think you'll see some of those metrics start to surface and benefit, uh, teams like ECU. John Gilbert with us. Uh, we'll get into a little bit of the conference realignment talk, and I'm sure that'll take multiple segments. But, uh, you know, obviously the Clemson news coming out. Uh, somebody wants to know your your thoughts on Florida State, Clemson, and all the, the lawsuits with the grant of rights exit fee. And I don't know, as an AD, what do you make of all this mess right now? Well, I, I'm going to talk about the CFP, the, the recent distribution yeah. and the document sign. And again, short version, SEC and Big Ten are taking, this starts in 2026, they're going to take uh, $21 million a year per school. Uh, the ACC is going to take $13 million a year per school. Uh, Big 12, $12 million. And then down to the group of five schools, the 64 group of five schools, our distribution right now we get 1.5 a year. That distribution is going to go to 1.8 uh, per year for the group of five schools. I, I am a little disappointed uh, in how that played out. Um, you, you you ask yourself why would those other leagues take such a, a, a Small. di- smaller yeah. distribution than the SEC Big Ten, and and, and I think. We've talked about this earlier on the show. There, there is going to be a break of the bigger schools and the more resource schools, 
and, and I think you're starting to see that now. And it doesn't mean that we won't play him, and it doesn't mean that we won't be a part of it or have maybe a pathway to a championship, but you're going to see this, you know, this is going to be the new norm. These these uh, uh, bigger schools are going to take a bigger chunk of it and have a bigger influence. And and so um, disappointing that it, it's playing out like this, uh, but also we, we know the roadmap and we want to navigate it as best we can for ECU and to put us in the best position uh, for us to move forward. How frustrating was it, and I don't know much – you may not be able to share a lot of details, but the article I read basically said Mike Oresco wanted to fight more for the group of five schools and the other group of five schools didn't really back it. And also I read that if the group of five schools included in the playoff, there's no extra benefit, which seems kind of backwards to me. Yeah, so so there there's no like under the current arrangement for the next two years, there's a success fee that uh is a part of it, basically a pool of money if a group of five school or any other school uh, gets into it, there's a you know a, a, a little bit of upside yeah. for it. Moving forward, there is no uh, success fee as it stands right now. So that that piece is frustrating. And it, it, I don't know. Is there? It, it almost feels like a monopoly to me. Is there no way to like fight this, or is that just too many loopholes to ju- jump through? Well, I I. Th- I think it's hard, you know, if we were to go at that alone yeah. and be the sole league that fights it, it, it it makes it difficult. If other leagues were to join in, I think you have more of a collective effort and more of a leg to stand on, and it doesn't appear those other leagues were interested in, in uh, exploring that path. All right, he is John Gilbert. So let's take a break, and we'll come back. We'll continue with kind of the future outlook of – uh, the conferences, I know there's been a lot of questions. Hey, if the ACC loses members, what can ECU do to position itself to maybe backfill that conference? I'll ask John about that and more. This is Hoist the Colors on a Thursday. Hi, I'm D.R. Alligood. And I'm his daughter, Jessica. For 11 years, we have built quality driveways and parking lots for both your residential and commercial needs. We also offer free on-site quotes to have your custom driveways built the way you want. 252-946-1227. your family, and the health of all who live in Eastern North Carolina. This is about the transformation of a health system into something more powerful and more human, about creating new ways to treat disease and keep you well. This is about ECU Health, which is to say, it's really all about you. ECU Health, minds, hearts, purpose. Fifth Street Hardware is the home of the $9 lunch special Tuesday through Fridays. $9 specials every day, including the famous Burger Day on Tuesdays, Flatbread Pizza Wednesday, the famous Fifth Street Hardware Reuben on Thursday, and Fried Fish or Shrimp on Friday. Plus, trivia on Wednesday nights and live music every Thursday nights. And the Prime Rib Brunch Buffet has returned on Sundays. You heard that right. The Brunch Buffet with all the great items, including Prime Rib, Fifth Street Hardware, and downtown Greenville. Your confidence makes everything look good. You see the world in vivid color, not black and white. Swing through your neighborhood fantastic Sam's Cut in color. 
and let our experienced stylists take you from everyday to extraordinary. Fantastic Sam's hair salons are locally owned and operated. Our full service salons are conveniently located in Goldsboro, Kinston, Greenville, Newburn, Jacksonville, and Calabash. Stop in today at Fantastic Sam's where the possibilities are endless. Hi, I'm D.R. Elliott. And I'm his daughter, Jessica. For 11 years, we have built quality driveways and parking lots for both your residential and commercial needs. We also offer free on-site quotes to have your custom driveways built the way you want. 252-946-1227. What's happening? What's happening? Tell me what's happening. Every ECU fan's one stop for all things ECU athletics. This is Hoist the Colors with Stephen Igo on 94.3 The Game. All right, welcome back. Hoist the Colors. Uh, We'll be going for the next 20, 25 minutes or so. John Gilbert in studio, East Carolina. Director of Athletics, NCAA Tournament underway. Michigan State off to a 20-8 lead early on over Mississippi State. Tom Izzo in the tournament. Don't bet against them. All right, John Gilbert with us. And uh, we've got several questions. But we'll continue with the the conference realignment stuff. And so the ACC, obviously, if this grant of rights ordeal, you know, goes on the path that's seemingly going on with Clemson, Florida State. It seems like at some point the top teams in the league will eventually potentially move on. And I've gotten a lot of questions about, hey, East Carolina, could they be in a position to backfill? So can you do anything at this point to, like, prepare for that scenario? Or is that just, I don't know, out of your hands to a degree? No, I, I think you you certainly uh, can have conversations and, and convey that interest that um, – you know, we we are certainly interested if the opportunity presents itself. It, it's um, you know, we're we're not. Uh, it's been a little bit of a frustrating year for me in that we we have so many really good things that are going on in our department. Uh, we, we are generating more revenue than we've ever generated. We're raising more money. Uh, you, you know, our new deal with Playfly substantially better than, you know, our previous partner. I, I think there is great stability uh, with where we are. Obviously, uh, baseball is doing really well in the fall. Soccer and volleyball, you know, in really good position. We just have not had the competitive excellence in football and men's basketball and, and so, um, obviously, a lot of our fan base is focused on that, which I completely understand. Uh, I'm focused on it as well. But if you look at our department holistically, um, we, we are better than we've ever been financially. Um, competitively across the board, I would say we're better. Just we didn't have that competitive success this year. Uh, that we wanted in in football and men's basketball, but I think that is coming. Um, the The more that we can have holistic competitive success, the better foot forward we're we're going to have. You know, I talked to a a fairly high level ESPN executive today, and when I first said hello, his first comment was, "You know, we meaning ESPN, we need the Pirates to do well." And, you know, I told him I'm doing everything in my power to make sure that that we have all the resources we can have to, to be competitive. And so um, we, we are very well thought of in that world, in that space, uh, from our fan base, from our passion, from our game day atmosphere. And that's kudos to our fan base, kudos to our students. Um, so we have all the pieces uh, we've got to continue to invest, you know, budget wise, uh, you, you know, the lowest ACC budget is probably about double of what we are. And and so we, we would have to do some things financially uh, to, to invest in our programs to get there, because as as leagues start looking for new members, they're, they're going to want a member that can afford to be there financially. And that was, a you know, when the American was looking to expand, that was a big reason they chose the schools they did, uh, you know, the teams that could match that investment, so to speak. So I've had some people, I can't find the exact question, but basically saying, can you reach out to like state legislators to, A, to potentially help 
pitch ECU, you know, a, a public school uh, for the state to join the ACC? Is that is that like something you can even do? And then also for scheduling, which we can get into, but we'll focus on, you know, conference expansion to begin with. So, so let's just talk about conference uh, expansion in general. Yeah. So the, the way it works, it, it's not so much legislators. Uh, I'm not saying legislators can't help. They, they certainly can help. Um, but when it comes to expansion like that, it starts with conference commissioners and it, um, it also starts with presidents at those institutions. So at the end of the day, whether ECU will get in a, another conference at some point in the future, uh, and I do like the conference we're in, I think we can be really competitive in the American. And if you look at where the American is financially, and competitively compared to others, I feel like we're 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 you know at the top. It's going to come down to conference commissioners and presidents. Presidents will vote in whether to accept another member, and so um, you know you have conversations with individuals like that. And then on the the scheduling front, you know, in the past ECU has had to go to. Uh, you know, the government or legislators to get North Carolina, NC State on the schedule. Again, that's more maybe a, a question for Chancellor Rogers, but uh, is that a, a, a path you have to take? Because it seems like every time we talk to you, they're not maybe willing to play the Pirates. And well, play, well play I, I would say this in general, and again, back to the playoff. It's a 12-team playoff. There is a path for the highest rated group of five team. I don't want anyone to misunderstand what I'm about to say. If you look at Liberty last year, they they played one of the weaker schedules. I think they were dead last in FBS. Yeah, and yet they played in the Fiesta Bowl. Uh, you know, I'm not implying we're going to have the that type of schedule going forward. I don't think that's who we are. We want a competitive schedule. But if you if you look at that, I also don't want to have a schedule where we look at it and go, oh my gosh, those are great names, and out of four conference non conference games, we're underdogs in three of them. That that is not going to benefit us nationally as well. I do favor playing Power Five schools, uh, but Power Five schools are not coming to schools like us anymore. They used to. It is not happening now. They're all trying to position themselves to uh, get into the playoff, to get one of those at-large games. They'll play us on their home turf, but very few people are are willing to come this way. Uh, We're going to continue to beat that drum. We will play by games in the future. I've talked to some really good schools that I think our fan base would be excited about. They're they're in a holding pattern, and I'm talking about like 2029 and beyond. But we are clearly having those conversations. Uh, we got a, a, a fan on YouTube says, "Let's have a series with Clemson and football. I feel like they will agree to a we go there two times and we play in Charlotte once. Uh, they come here once. I, I don't see Clemson coming to Greenville. Um, maybe you know, maybe crazier things could happen. But I don't know. Is that is that even a possibility? Charlotte would maybe <sighs> make some sense, but still." You know, you're at a disadvantage when you're doing a two for one like that. Um, what when when uh when I worked at Alabama, a uh, graduate assistant Dabo Sweeney and I used to play basketball uh, twice a week. Uh, <laughs> well, and, hey, and you can use that relationship. Spirited pickup games. Uh, I I think Clemson certainly would play us. They're probably not coming to Greenville to play us. Clemson, uh, definitely a very good football program. We'll see what happens with the whole ACC thing. So App State feels like a game that, I don't know, it, it makes sense for both sides to extend uh, the series. What can you, you know, can you maybe shed any light on if those conversations have, have taken place for the future? Yeah, uh, Doug and I have talked. Uh, we're both interested in extending that series. I think it's a good game for both of us. Um, obviously, they've had a very good program for a number of years. Um, I, I think that's a good game for us. It, it, uh, I'm glad we're finally getting him in Greenville. I didn't, yeah, feels didn't like it, it, I did. Well, I didn't love the way the yeah. previous contract was written, but it is, it is what it is. We'll get them in Greenville the next couple years. 
uh, but but certainly would extend that. I think that's a good series for the Pirates. And then you mentioned uh, you know a potential buy game in the future. Do you know what year or years you're looking at maybe doing that? Well, it'd really be 29 and beyond. Okay. Um, we, we might have one before then, no contract signed. Okay. So I'll wait, I'll wait till we get there before, uh, th- there's, um, you know, I like playing seven games at home. Y- you know, most schools are playing six. Uh, we have some years where you play, we're, we're going to play seven. You have to go on the road. Uh, so, y- you know, when you look at scheduling a game, it really is like putting a puzzle together. And so there there are some years that, you know, we're going to have to go on the road. And uh, I want to make sure that, you know, if there's a way to go on the road and have a competitive game where you might could win the game and get paid, uh, I'd be interested in that. He is John Gilbert. We'll get our final break in. We'll come back. We'll hit on a few more things. Got a a couple questions on the potential play-by-play opening. We'll address that and more on Hoist the Colors on this Thursday. Air service is back at Pitt Greenville Airport, offering safe, clean facilities and flights from American Airlines. That means the short commute, quicker lines, and better prices that get you where you're going fast and easy. See it for yourself. There's great things inside at Pitt Greenville Airport. Storm season is approaching. North Carolina weather can damage your roof, and before long, a small leak can turn into a big problem. Your home is one of your biggest investments, so protect it with Wells Home Improvements. We work with all insurance companies for a hassle-free roof installation experience. Call us today and get 10% off your roof installation when you mention this commercial. 252-227-8403 or visit us online at wellshomeimprovements.com. Wells Home Improvements, local, honest, dependable. Get ready for an unforgettable experience at the first annual Mid-Atlantic Hunting and Fishing Expo happening in Greenville, North Carolina on March 23rd and 24th. Explore a wide array of exhibits showcasing the latest gear, equipment, and accessories. Discover expert tips and techniques from seasoned professionals in captivating seminars. Connect with fellow outdoorsmen and immerse yourself in the world of outdoor adventure. Mark your calendars and be part of the Mid-Atlantic Hunting and Fishing Expo. Big tax credits are back. Get a 30% tax credit, up to $2,000 off your new Mitsubishi electric heat pump install. Let Comfort Master help you take advantage of the tax credits with a qualifying Mitsubishi electric ducted heat pump or non-ducted Mitsubishi electric mini splits. Mitsubishi electric mini splits are ideal for bonus rooms, garages, or sunrooms. If you need a new HVAC unit, call Comfort Master today. Call Comfort Master. Call Comfort Master. When a place is as special as this, you don't want to change a thing. You simply want to enjoy it, just as it is. That was our inspiration behind Bow Coast West, our newest community in Beaufort, North Carolina. Embrace all that we love about this very special place and make it easy for families to enjoy all that this coastal lifestyle has to offer. Be inspired. Bow Coast West. Air service is back at Pitt Greenville Airport, offering safe, clean facilities and flights from American Airlines. That means the short commute, quicker lines, and better prices that get you where you're going fast and easy. See it for yourself. There's Everything you need to know in the Pitt world Greenville of ECU Airport. athletics. This is Hoist the Colors with Stephen Igo on 94.3 The Game. All right, uh, welcome back in Hoist the Colors. Got a few minutes left with John Gilbert. Uh, awesome hour here. Appreciate this, Tom. We are also watching the NCAA tournament. Michigan State up 27-18 late first half against Mississippi State in the first game of the field of 64. All right, so we got a few minutes left. We'll rattle off some of these questions to John Gilbert. 
I meant to ask you, uh, do you, do you have a season ticket update on football uh, as well? Yeah, we're, we're right at, I think, 6,800 on season tickets. Want to get to that 15,000 or uh, higher. And I, I know we're tracking ahead of where we were last year pretty significantly. Really? So I, I hope to hit that 15 number. And again, you ask what what can we do that number is better than most every other g5 so like when we start ha when we have conversations with people about where ecu is in the landscape that is one of the first things we tout so the better we are at season tickets uh that sits well with people because they know people care about watching the pirates so if you want the pirates to go to the acc buy a season ticket today <laughs> is what i'm hearing uh uh Somebody wants to know about – sometimes y'all have a, a athletic apparel sale around the spring game. What is the status of that? And I always get asked, too, can the spring game be streamed? And I don't know if Coach Houston would be a fan of that, but uh, what are <laughs> yeah. your thoughts on those two things? Uh, so we, we will do an apparel sale if we have enough apparel. So I, I, I'll need to check. I'm pretty sure that we're doing that, okay. but um, – I will. I'll look into that and, and let you know. It'll also. It'll. It'll strictly determine what excess apparel do we have, uh, and then what was the other question? Uh, stream in the spring yeah. game is that? The, a viable you know, I don't think with a new coordinator, uh, new quarterback, and all that, that coaches love that being streamed because you know every every other uh, coach is yeah. going to watch it, and and so uh, it will not be streamed. Yeah, I mean, it's it's one of those things. Some teams and conferences do it, but then, you know, it can be an advantage for the other yeah. teams, especially to open a year with a bunch of changes. All right, so Austin Voss on YouTube says, big contingent of us would like Scooter Rogers to be the next voice of the Pirates. Scott does a great job here at 94.3 The Game. He wants to know, what can we as fans do to support influence folks on this decision? And also... Uh, Robert Matthews wants to know any update on hiring of the new voice of the Pirates. So what's kind of the status of that? Opening yeah, now? so so uh, Jim Zoki will return to, to cover football. Uh, Scooter at, does a great job with baseball. Uh, undecided, uh, Darren Vault did basketball this, this past year. And, and I've been at places with both models. Um, you, you know, at, at Tennessee, we had one, one voice. Uh, at Alabama, we had two one did uh football and then the other did basketball and someone else did baseball and, and so i i think for the next year uh certainly jim zoki i thought was great with football will continue to do football uh and we're still looking and evaluating what uh what what the the next uh basketball voice will look like and then pirates unite uh has recently gotten some big donations where does that stand especially the indoor facility yeah going extremely well i i'd say our foot indoor football building uh and our baseball uh expansion to to use the football term uh we're in the red zone uh, i think on on football we need another <clears throat> three to five million to to get moving uh, we're starting to do some things behind the scenes from a programming and planning standpoint. Ba uh, baseball's right there. Uh, we're going to look at uh, getting someone in to evaluate our plans to make sure, like a, a contractor, to make sure our cost and estimates from the architect are actual, uh, but really pleased with where that is. So what we need a little more to get over the hump in football, uh, we've got some big ask out and, uh, you know, need everybody to participate to help bring that to fruition. How is there a number on football as far as like how many more million you need to raise? <clears throat> well, well, I think we're th three, three to five, okay. uh, you know, somewhere in that general area. Again, we'll get a contractor in to, to evaluate it and look and make sure the architect's numbers are right. We'll also get some <laughs> gift in kind, but, uh, you know, an additional three million would really get us over that hunt, and put us in. We're in really good shape. That that would cement us and and get us moving. See, again, you have to raise basically all the money before you can start. Do you feel like that's achievable by you know, let's say later this calendar year? Yeah, I I do think it's achievable. Yeah. And like, if you look at what we've raised, you know, for the indoor building, we've raised more money than what we raised on the tower. 
and in the tower everybody was getting a skybox or a premium seat we've basically done the in indoor building and baseball on naming opportunities uh just impressive all the way around in my mind and then after that it would what the focus would turn to maybe the team's building team's building we need some expansion out there our, our teams are a little crunched on space uh and then basically we would be in a renovation mode of of, of facilities uh i think the the indoor practice facility is the last piece for us as a high major 1a football program after that, I, I think we're in pretty good place. And we, we got about a minute left here with John. Do you know how long? This would probably be an easier question after you have the architect and everybody come in. How long each, like the baseball building and the football building, would take to actually construct, start to finish? Yeah, you're probably looking at you know 15 months on a on a building like the indoor practice building. Okay, and then baseball. Uh, probably about the same. Okay. Maybe a little. Maybe just a tad more. It's a little more complex you know the the indoor building is basically a, a big metal barn so you, it, it's not as complex as what baseball is awesome well john this has been great man we appreciate the time uh full hour with us today means a lot uh for sure i know a lot of pirate fans enjoy it and uh thanks so much and we'll have you back i'm sure uh, down the road i'll come back anytime go pirates he is john gilbert outstanding stuff today from the athletic director over at East Carolina. Uh, again, we uh, answered a little bit of everything. And uh, let me know on the spring sale so I can let the people know. I will. You know, on the next show. Uh, good stuff from John Gilbert today. All right. We are out of time. Tomorrow, we've got Joseph Sampson, former ECU football player. He'll join the show. We'll talk March Madness. We'll do our MLB previews and much more on Friday's edition of Hoist the Colors at 12 noon. We will see you then. Thanks for listening.